Hi everybody, it's Joe Krug from FinSuite. In this video, we're going over the scroll down icon with a page load, page trigger interaction. What's gonna happen is this Lottie icon is going to animate just the arrow and it's going to loop the arrow up and down. As we scroll down the page and get past a certain point, we're going to collapse this scroll down wrapper that's holding the icon and the user will continue scrolling as if they were normally scrolling down the page. So we have two interactions to cover. First, let's get into the Lottie icon animation. Please note that we are not using the loop. Check out what the loop looks like. It's pretty cool. It's going to animate the mouse part and animate it in and out as well as the arrow up and down. So this is cool. You can do this. We're setting it up with IX2 instead, so we have full flexibility of what we are going to loop and what we're gonna show. Let's go into preview and see what we've set up here. We have a looping arrow. We don't have the mouse animating in or out, it's just the arrow. And when we scroll down, this is going to collapse itself. Pretty cool. Cool, so we're telling the user, hey, scroll down and you can place a link here. If I click this, it's gonna scroll down to a certain part of the page. Great. And let's see how this is set up in IX2. First, the Lottie. Let's go into our page load. We have a page trigger for page load and we have a timed animation called scroll down. And here, scroll down load, we are setting an initial state to this Lottie icon. It's set to 32, and let's actually add some margin here so we can see what's going on. That message is definitely in our way, and we wanna see what's going on here. So we are just temporarily putting this margin on, and now when we go and view this, great, let's see what's going on. We have an initial state of 32%. That is the frame where we are no longer animating the mouse in. Cool. And we are going to set this action to 32% as well with the duration of zero. So we have this initial state. It's really useful for seeing the icon inside designer, but we also need this state because as we loop it, we need to make sure that we are returning to 32. So we're going 32 then 70, then 32, then 70. That's how it's gonna loop. You can totally play around with these values. You can loop going from zero, you can loop with just maybe one bump, one up and down of the arrow. You can animate further on the other side. Let's get to 32, come on. Okay, 32, there we go. And. Our second step here is a delay of 0.3, duration of 1.5, with the Lottie icon going to 70% of its frames. So as we do this, we have a couple of pumps, and then we are looping this, and it looks great, cool. So we've taken a Lottie icon that had a lot more sequences, it had a lot more frames and things going on, but we just picked a small piece of it so that we can animate just the arrow going up and down. Nice, that's the Lottie portion. Now let's go into showing and hiding this entire wrapper. So I will go and remove this and let's see what element we have the scroll down on. There we go, right here. So we set a div on the page set to absolute Z index of negative one. That means that no one's gonna be able to click this. It's not going to be blocking any of the elements. It is not gonna get in our way. We also can't touch it inside designer, so we have to grab it in navigator here. Let's go and see what we have applied to this div. Inside our element trigger, we have a scroll into view. And in our scroll into view, we have two timed animations, one when it scrolls in, one when it scrolls out. So here we have the scroll down circle into view, and what's going to happen is, we need to scroll out of view to see this, but it's going to scale to what we see visibly here on the page. 
It's gonna scale to one, which is its original state, and it's going to move to negative 50. And the reason it's moving to negative 50 is we have this transform. So when we interact with scale, we also have to apply the move transform inside interactions because if we don't, it's going to misalign itself to the page. And just to see how that actually works, I'm gonna show you why this is an important step. It's now misaligned. So we need that step just so we can use the scale here. And great, okay, now we're back. Okay, now the one that we see visibly when we scroll out of view, we are going to open this up and we're going to scale this whole thing down to zero. So it's gonna to scale to nothing at a duration of 0.4. We're not doing anything different with the move here. It's still staying at the 50%, negative 50%. This is to maintain the transform position. So it's not actually moving left or right. So we can view this. There we go, looking great. So if we go and preview this, we can't preview this back to its original state, but it is working. Notice how we've set some offsets here. So this is a custom location of a div. We are placing it exactly where we want on the page. You can see absolute at 25% viewport height down the page. And we are saying when it is 75% offset, scroll it back into view. And when it's scrolled out of view at a 75% offset, run this and scale it down to zero. And that is how both of these pieces are working. We have our Lottie icon animating just the arrows, and then we have this cool wrapper bouncing in and out. And that is how you implement a scroll down icon with the page load page trigger. That's effing sweet.